Well, it's Christmas time, so what would the holidays be without a Star Wars film that made all of us uncomfortable to talk about? <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is our post geek reaction for Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of the Skywalker. We can't possibly make this tile any longer. The finale to Disney's primary trilogy, because I know they have another trilogy planned, but I don't know if that continues this storyline. I think that's its own separate thing. Which I'm kind of okay with, because I'm kind of done with this entire Star Wars storyline. Yes, I mean, we're, we love The Mandalorian. It's Mandalorian like we want... is awesome. Yeah. I'm playing uh, Jedi Fallen Order. It's good. It's like, Marvel's basically, making... we want, like, all the spin-off stuff. We don't yeah. really care about the main storyline anymore. It this... is done. It is done. I've and... said this many, many times and about... Peach is excited. Peach is excited. Uh, Peach is excited for more Baby Yoda. <laughs> oh my god, Halloween costume next year! Yeah! Yes, okay. Uh, oh my goodness, Peach. So, before I had all the wind <laughs> sucked out of me by this dog, uh, yeah, I've said that many times before, but a lot of times when people complain about how it's like, oh, the Disney Star Wars films aren't Star Wars films, they don't capture anything in the old Star Wars films, I think most of what people are remembering about the quote-unquote old Star Wars films are not actually the old Star Wars films. It's the expanded universe spin-off stuff. I think that's what most people remember. And when you look at a lot of the Expanded Universe spin-off stuff that Disney's been putting out ever since they got it, it's like, this is actually kind of the best stuff. Like, Mandalorian's really good, a lot of the comics are really good, a lot of the characters they're creating over there are really good, a lot of the books are really good, from what I understand, Star Wars Rebel is really good. It's really just people looking at the movies going, well, that's not like the old movies, and I'm looking at these movies going, yeah, they're exactly like the old <laughs> movies. They're very much like the old movies. Uh, so just to let everybody know where I stand on this, <clears throat> If you didn't watch our reviews, because it was years ago, on Force Awakens, really enjoyed Force Awakens. Really enjoyed it. Just wish that they had have gone back to the well as much as they did. Like, we didn't need another Death Star. That kind of drove me nuts. But, yeah, I really enjoyed a lot of stuff that we got in Force Awakens. Uh, Last Jedi, really enjoyed Last Jedi. There are a couple of story element things in there that I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that doesn't quite work. And, yeah, you didn't really introduce that as well as you should have, and that didn't really play out as well as it should have. But overall, I like what they were going for in there. I think that the stuff that did work in there far outshone the stuff that didn't work in there. So I still really like The Last Jedi. I don't really like Rise of Skywalker. Well, not too many people seem to be enjoying it. Like, it's... Uh, mm, uh, critics. critics. Not too many critics are enjoying yeah. it. I looked around on Twitter right before this. I went, all right, what is everybody? What is, like, the regular movie goer thing? A ton of praise. Just uh, like I saw nothing but praise for this. My timeline is hating it though. <laughs> but my timeline won't show up about how good The Last Jedi is. Mm. And I keep looking at them like, all right, guys, I get it. I get that you like stuff in there, but Last Jedi does have some problems in there, all right? We all need to admit that Last Jedi does indeed have some problems with it. So I think that a lot of the people who are hating on this in my timeline are kind of hating on it because they feel like this movie is countering a lot of the stuff that was in The Last Jedi, which, yeah, it does, and that is some of the problems I have in here. I mean, there's stuff in Last Jedi that they were like, oh, this is a big, important moment, and they just like, nope! Just gone, this, mm -mm, no, we're not, we're not doing that, no. No, no, not that at all, mm, -mm. Uh, Like, I don't know if I should talk about this one for spoiler stuff, uh, but let's just say that there is a thing that gets destroyed in Last Jedi, and it gets destroyed in a way like that's a stupid thing. We're not going. We don't need this. We're going to move on with beyond this. And like right as soon as this movie begins, they are reconstructing that thing because we need to have that thing back. And oh my god, like this is my problem with what Disney has done with the main storyline, uh, with the main trilogy. You know, episodes yeah. seven, eight, nine is that it feels to me like they didn't have a plan for episode 9 when they started making episode 7. Mm -hmm. And when you think over at the Marvel stuff, about how like uh, they have to introduce certain elements at one point so they, they can play out 10 movies later down the line, and how well planned out all that stuff is, and then you look over at the Star Wars, their big trilogy, and you're just like, so you guys just were like, hey, let's just have fun with this. Let's just, you know, let's just... Everybody, whoever's making this film just gets to do whatever they want with it. It's like, Honestly, I kind of feel like they did the same thing with the prequels. Like, <laughs> Oh, well, the prequels was just George Lucas coming in here and saying that he never liked the original trilogy uh, and just going, well, this is what I wanted to make. It's like, oh, what you wanted to make was bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, again, I want to remind everyone, 
I still think, on average, that the uh, that the Disney trilogy is pretty darn good. Like, even though I have problems with this one, it doesn't negate the stuff that I like from the previous two films. I still think that this averages out to be a pretty good trilogy, and I'm not going to forget what the trilogy was right before this one. Like, nostalgia has not blinded me at this point. No, the prequels were flat-out garbage. So, yes, this entire trilogy it still comes out to be pretty okay. And I didn't even like hate this. I'm not coming in here and saying like, oh, this movie is absolutely terrible. No, I just, it's not good. It's, oh, at least to me, you actually did like it. I thought it was okay. Yeah, uh, so let's go ahead, let's get into this. Uh, this one, yeah, you guys all know from the trailers that they were hinting at Palpatine being back he comes back in the first paragraph of The Crawl. Mm -hmm. Like the big da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. yeah, it's the very first paragraph is the dead can talk. A message has gone out across the universe of Emperor Palpatine. What? That's how you, what? <laughs> what, I had, I had to tap myself back. I had to tap myself back on that one because I had to remind myself it's Star Wars. Having big, really important stuff happen off screen so that you can explore it in comics and books and TV shows is kind of what this entire franchise is known for. Like, I don't like it, but I can't point at this and go, oh, well, that's a terrible thing that we've never seen before. No, we've actually seen this all the time in this franchise, so, all right, fine, fine. Yeah, Palpatine is back. He apparently was the one who created Snoke. He created the First Order. And now he's getting uh, Kylo Ren to come back over to his side. Even though Kylo Ren's whole thing at the end of the last film was, no, the light side and the dark side. Get rid of all of it. Get rid of all that stuff. Leave it all behind. Oh, what's that? Go back to the stuff that was behind me? Okay, sure. Yeah, like uh, once again, like you said, like all the stuff that, they, that was important in the previous movies, out the window. Yeah. All the stuff from the previous films can be summed up perfectly with Rose Tico in this film. <laughs> because, man, Rose Tico is like, yeah, she's going to be the fourth member of this crew. You're going to have uh, Ray and Finn and Poe and Rose. It's going to be all four of them together. They throw Rose, like, completely out the window. Mm -hmm. It is insulting yeah. how little she has to do in this film. It's, oh, some random asshole on the internet said he really didn't like Rose Tico. Well, we have to get the random asshole on the internet crowd to come in here. <laughs> uh, you spoiler cowards. alert, all the, pretty much most of the Star Wars fan base is the annoying asshole on the internet, yeah. so... They're going to be the annoying asshole on the internet on one side of the <laughs> argument, okay? Because, like I said... I like The Last Jedi, but I still look at a lot of the people out there going, The Last Jedi is absolute perfection. Everything in there is genius, and there isn't a flaw in that film. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh my god, no. It's a good film, but wow, does it have problems. Um, yeah, sorry. We're not even reviewing this film at this <laughs> point. We're just reviewing Star Wars in general. Uh, but yeah, Rose Tico, yeah, I had some problems with her in the last film, but nothing that couldn't be you know tweaked up and fixed easily in the next film. They decided not to do that. They decided just to have her be like, I'm in the background, hi. Hi, remember me? Remember how I kissed Finn at, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Finn. Uh, remember how I kissed Finn at the end of the last film and that was going to create this whole dilemma of, oh no, does he like me or does he like Ray? No, that shit comes up. Literally, like, he goes up to Rose and is like, all right, cool, good work. Pats her on the shoulder. And I just looked at that and went, is that all that we're gonna get off of where those two left off in the last film? What? Rose just got friend zoned. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Like I just looked at that and went, okay, even if, even if you're somebody out there who didn't like Rose, it's a plot point. You have to address plot points. You have to address things brought up in the story. Oh my god, how do you just sweep an entire plot line just under the bus like that? Wow. Um, so, yeah, this entire film is them trying to figure out how to get to Emperor Palpatine so they can have a big showdown. And along the way, uh, Rey and Kylo Ren have, you know, more showdowns with each other. Um, Rey ends up discovering, yeah, this is a thing that people have been hinting at. Again, I'll save it for the spoiler section, but they keep uh, bringing up the fact that, yes, her parents were nobodies, but there's more to that story in there. 
yeah, they explore more of that story. Like again, this is another thing that I'm saying about how uh, it really feels like they did not know what episode nine was going to be when they wrote episode seven. They didn't know what episode nine was going to be when they wrote episode eight because this is them coming in and going, what was that that you want to do about Ray's parents? Oh yeah, no, we ain't doing that. Yeah, no. <laughs> honestly, like after like the seventh and eighth uh, movie, I'm like. Is this actually going to be a trilogy, or is there going to be like more movies? It does not feel like this is the like in a way it feels like the end of the trilogy. Like at the very end, the big confrontation, the end. Yes, it feels like the end of a trilogy. But man, there is so much stuff that's like no, there need to be more explored here, and you need to talk about this stuff more. And uh, I still have more questions, and a lot of stuff brought up in this film was not seen in any of the previous films, and a lot of stuff that was seen in the previous films not seen in this one at all. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> If you want to just enjoy this as its own thing, maybe, may, I mean, again, like, I know that there are people enjoying it. I know there are people mm -hmm. enjoying it. But, man, just talking about, like, the idea of building something, it wasn't. They just, they didn't, they didn't build anything with this. Uh, it's really frustrating to me. Um, and uh, this film, it moves so goddamn quick. The pacing in this film No, is, like, the pacing in the beginning was, like, Whiplash, but yes. then like during like the third or second act, like the second into the third act, is sort of like okay. a snail's pace. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, it slows down a it bit. Does. It does. Maybe not a but snail's the, pace, but, but in the beginning, you're right. Compared to the beginning, oh my god! In the beginning of this thing, they're just this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing here, here, here. We're over at this place now. We're doing this thing, like, and like the <laughs> editing doesn't help with that at all. Oh it's no! Not, it's not even just like how the story is presented to you. It's even just like shots. Like, there was a moment which they were looking at a thing, and they need to decipher this thing. And C-3PO starts talking about this thing while Ray is holding it. Camera angle, coming from this angle, Ray holding the thing right there. Very next shot, C-3PO continuing to talk, and he's the one holding it. And I was like, you just, that, whoa, what? Hold up. I know apparently the Force can teleport things, but... That's the only explanation for how those two shots work together. <laughs> uh, yeah, also to all the people out there who in The Last Jedi were like, well, the Force doesn't work that way. I've always said the Force works whatever way you want it to work. But man, there's kind of a, there's kind of a very convenient way that it works in this one. Uh, which the Force has always worked in a very convenient way. <laughs> Again, I'll admit, the Force has always been whatever we need it to be at that moment. But man, in this one, there is just a thing that it starts doing, and I'm like, you guys could do that the whole time? What? That would solve so many problems before this! Uh, so, yeah. Uh, again, we're saving it all for spoiler stuff, but, um... And the real shame of this one to me is that I do like Force Awakens. I do like The Last Jedi, and the reason why I like those two so much, you know, some of it is, like, the ideas that get brought up in there, especially when it comes to The Last Jedi. I think they brought up a lot of really interesting ideas in that film. But what makes me really like these films is the characters. <coughs> Gazuntai. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to add on to that, but then just went into a sneeze. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, what makes me really like these films is the characters. Like, The Force Awakens, I can totally look at that film and just go, yeah, you're literally just doing A New Hope all over again. Like, there's differences, but, man, there's a lot of similarities in here. But the reason I was so okay with it was because I like these new characters a lot. Last Jedi still like these characters a lot. Force Awakens, we get not Force Awakens, uh, Rise, Rise of Skywalker, Skywalker. whatever. Uh, episode nine, we get almost like no time with these characters. It is just moving, moving, moving so quick. They're like, okay, we gotta wrap this up. Let's keep, keep moving. going, like, keep going, yeah, keep going, like... keep going. There is a moment in there that is supposed to be the big. No moment, and they're just like, we gotta get on to the next thing, and then literally in the next scene, they go, yeah, that didn't actually happen. And the explanation for how it didn't happen, I just went, no, <laughs> no, I refuse to believe that. I, no, 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 no. I'm calling bullshit on that. Uh, yeah, there's also just a ton of conveniences in here. There's so many conveniences in here. Uh, again, I'm being super vague to avoid spoilers, but there's like a moment towards the end where they need to find a place and like, oh, we have no way of getting to this thing. And then it turns out this random thing that they happen to find earlier in the film. It's like, oh no, this is what originally was going to lead to that thing. What? I, oh God, it was real. You guys know me, you know I hate Deus Ex Machina. It's like, it's something that I complain about a lot in movies. Uh, in fact, I probably complain about too much. 
Oh man, I really felt like this entire film was a ton of that. And I'm not even talking about the Force. I'm not, because again, the Force has kind of established itself to be whatever we need it to be whenever we need it to be it. But man, there's so many things in here that I just kept looking at going, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Um, by the way, where the hell are the porgs? Chewie ate those porgs, right? <laughs> like we're all in agreement? No, the porgs are on that island with the uh, blue milk. Well that's, so. <laughs> well, that's where they're raised. That's where their family is. But they infested the Millennium Falcon. Whatever happened to those things? <laughs> that's the least of the things that got brought up in the last film that did not carry over to this one. But <laughs> yeah, they introduced a brand new toy in this one, which it's Star Wars. There's always going to be that brand new toy in here. But man, the porgs was like, yeah, you're on this alien planet. There's going to be these weird species there. And they're there for a gag, and it's fun. Okay, cool, whatever. This new thing that they introduced in here... I just kept looking at it going, this is something that you just found in the garbage and now you're treating it like, yeah, it's our buddy. He's following us around now. What? Okay. Sure. Fine. You guys are going to have to forgive us if we end up making a couple cuts in this thing, but we keep talking about stuff that we want to bring up and then we're realizing, oh, that's really spoilery. Mm. That's some real spoiler territory right there. And it's a shame because a lot of the problems I have with this film, it's all spoiler stuff. Uh, but just to kind of like sum it up as vaguely as I can put it, I feel like a lot of the characters in here who needed to have a resolution didn't really get anything. Like, Rey gets a resolution, which is great because she's the star of this. She needs that. But Finn gets like no resolution to anything. Poe, Poe, God damn it. Again, I'm going to put this as vague as I can. Poe does get a resolution to the arc that was like an idea introduced in Last Jedi and went, okay, you need to explore that idea some more because one of the problems I had with Last Jedi, it was that whole scene of like, oh, we're not going to tell you what the plan is and the reason they didn't tell was because, yeah, you got a lot of our guys killed. You're a hot shot. That doesn't actually work in resistances. We need people to all be on the same page. And I felt like nobody sat his ass down and explained this stuff to him. They were just like, no, we're not telling you because you've been a big jerk. <laughs> and I'm just like, you need to sit his ass, you need to like make this dude right on the fucking blackboard. I will not get my entire crew killed to show <laughs> off how cool I am. You need to do that. You need to make this guy realize that he has been a massive screw up. And in this film, it feels like he has to realize his responsibility, but I do not feel like that is earned. Mm. I don't feel like that is earned at all, but at least I can point at that and be like, well, I guess there's something of a resolution to the storyline in some way or another, but it doesn't feel good enough to me. Ray gets something, Ray absolutely does get something, but Finn, man, I kept waiting for him to get something. I kept waiting for him to get something, and they introduce him to some new characters who tie into his past. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm trying to be super vague on this one, and that's good. That is good. That is one of those things that I look at as like, oh, that's an excellent element to introduce to Finn's story. And I feel like at the end of this, they don't go anywhere with that. At least not in regards to Finn. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a thing that happens with one of those characters at the very end of this that I went, oh, that's interesting. And I would like to see what happens with that character. But again, I'm looking over at Finn, one of the three main characters that we got introduced to in this trilogy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you really got like nothing to do here at the end. Uh, I feel like they do just kind of, like, drop him. Uh, and part of that does come down to the pacing on all this. Um, because there are characters who do get resolutions. I feel like they just go way too quick. Like, mm -hmm. Kylo Ren gets a resolution. Ky Kylo Ren, he has a character arc in here. But, man, it is just a, there, character arc activated. What? But in all fairness, at the beginning of this movie, they went, what was your character arc in the last film? You wanted to leave it all behind and create your own thing? Okay, you're not doing that anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's real frustrating. Um, and I hate complaining about Star Wars. I really do. Because, man, I saw the toxicity levels with Last Jedi. Mm. And we even saw how, like, 
hate groups were actually using people's frustration with Last Jedi to try and recruit them to their side. Like, that's not even like a thing, like a conspiracy we're making up. Like, there's actual reports that people did to go, oh, no, actual legit hate groups are going onto Star Wars message boards and going, hey, did you hate The Last Jedi? Yeah, it was all because of this thing. Uh, so I don't want to add anything to that. I don't want to become part of that dialogue, but dude, we review movies on here and I think this movie wasn't all that good. Uh, it does have good stuff in there, I think. Uh, like, at the end, there's some pretty good fan service -y moments in there. Uh, that's something that we cut out because we realized it was spoilery, but we'll just say there are some big fan service moments in here. Uh, some that were real deep cuts, like the people sitting next to us at the theater <laughs> banged their hand on the table when some character showed up and went, Yeah! And went, Alright, well, <laughs> they're happy about that. That's cool. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that... I really enjoyed it here. Uh, um, C-3PO, some of the best C-3PO stuff. Really liked him in here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on this one, guys. Man, I am really trying to find something in here. Uh, I didn't, but I didn't hate this film. No. I did hate this film, but... It's, it's got just... problems, and I can't really find a lot of things I did actually like in this movie. It's like... It's got problems, like, not so much that you feel like it's worth bringing up. It's, uh, or, like... I will admit, in the last hour of this film, I pretty much continuously just kept saying to myself, Oh, fuck off. So, there are things in here. There are definitely things in here that really frustrated me. But, it's... But the stuff in between that, I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Just, eh, fine. Like, right down the middle, like... There came a point where I just wanted it to end. Mm -hmm. Not because I hate it, but just because I was bored. Just because I was like, all right, fine. Uh, we're, we're doing this now. Yeah, it's like, scene. like, I don't know if, like, I mentioned this before, but I don't know if it got edited out or anything. Yeah. It's like, I mentioned that, like, the beginning was, like, so fast No, we, that was just kept in here, yeah. Okay, Sorry, yeah. we have made a lot of cuts. <laughs> also, we're very tired. We're very... <laughs> we just sat through this movie. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it's a very long movie. It's a very long movie. It's very cold outside. Yeah. We have to go and see Cats after this. <laughs> uh, so, maybe we should have seen Cats before this one, seeing if it affected our views on this. <laughs> um, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make me look at Chewbacca in a totally different way. Uh, God... There's really, like, nothing else that I can say about this film without getting into the spoiler territory on here, but I'll just say, a lot of the decisions they made here, I really was disappointed with. Uh, I feel like the characters that I really enjoyed in the last two films, they're cut so quickly in this movie that I just didn't really get anything out of them. I didn't really get any attachment to the characters in this one. Uh, I feel like big character moments in here did not feel earned. Also, I feel like this movie, it's not just edited poorly, I think it's shot pretty poorly as well. Because there are moments in here that should have a big impact, but just because of the way that shot, I got, like, nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there's a moment in here where Rey has to use the Force in a way that is bigger than anything we have seen her do before. And I do not have a problem. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Rey is such a Mary Sue because you can use the Force so well. <laughs> no, I'm not on that side. But if you're going to suddenly have a character just do something bigger than we've ever seen them do, show us them, like, struggling a little bit. Like, yeah. show them, like, you know, going, like, Ugh. Uh, uh, like actually struggling with that instead she just goes and done and went like sh like this is bigger than anything we've seen you gotta show them like working towards that a little bit and yeah man this thing it doesn't have time for that it's just moving just yeah. moving 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 like I mentioned that Kylo he's got like a character arc in here and that character arc just bam it just happens I understand kind of the reason why they had to make it just go bam and it happens but you kind of put some more in there. Uh, I'll go into it in the spoiler section, but yeah, man, again, it's one of those things that that should have been a big thing, but oh, man, was it not a big thing. Mm. Uh, so do you want to, like, uh, give it your score but, and then finally get I'm into gonna, the spoilers? Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going straight into spoilers. Uh, I'm giving it a four. Uh, I oh, was going, wow. Yeah, I was going back and forth on this, but yeah, like I said, a giant chunk of this film was, like, right down the middle, just a five out of ten. And in the beginning, I was enjoying some stuff, but then I realized, no, it was kind of just because I was happy to get another Star Wars, because I like these characters, and I was happy to see these characters again. And then eventually I went, oh, these characters, they're being way too rushed for me to get any attachment to them. Uh, it was the moment in which we got a little bit of backstory on um, 
on uh, Poe. And there was like a brief little fun exchange between Poe and Finn and Rey. I went, oh, that's nice. And then it suddenly hit me, oh yeah, that's the stuff that I liked. And we haven't gotten any of that throughout the rest of this film. Uh, so yeah, a lot of this, it was right down the middle, 5 out of 10. But there are so many moments in here that just made me go, oh, fuck off. That, yeah, it, it dropped it down. It's a 4 out of 10. I'm not going to use the Rage Tile card in this one. For a Rage Tile card, you got to get me down to a 3. And there's a lot of stuff in here that's like... Listen, man, these are charming actors with characters that I do like, even if they're not being treated that well in this particular one. It's hard to make me really dislike a lot of the things in here, but there are decisions in here that I really disliked. Uh, but what are you going to get? I guess maybe like a six and a half or okay. seven or something like that. It's oh, like, wow. I, I, um, well, it's like... Like, yeah, tell us what you liked about this one, because I've been going <laughs> off on this one. Like, um, go ahead. Honestly, the stuff that I liked about it is the same stuff that I liked in the previous movies. I liked the characters. I liked the uh, connect, the uh, chemistry between all of them. Yeah. I did wish we had more, which is why my score is lower. But yeah, don't. that's that's exactly <laughs> what it was to me. Like, I do like those things, and I'm mad that we didn't get more of and that. And I think another reason why it's a little bit higher than yours is because, like... It's a decent chunk higher than mine. Well, like, a reason why I'm more positive about it is, like, oh, happy ending. It's over. Yay. Like, as far as, like, the... the we're uh, done. <laughs> we're done, finally. <laughs> Everybody shut up now. <laughs> Go back to praising baby Yoda. Uh, um... Yeah, it's, I mean, like I said, I do like the ending. I do like, I, that actually might have been one of the things we cut out. Uh, I do actually like the ending of this. Um, but I just kind of feel like a lot of stuff leading up to it could have been done so much better. Yeah. Make it pay off so much better. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot, man. It's one of those where if you told me just the beats of what happened in this film, I'd be like, oh man, that sounds like it could be epic. And I just really dislike the execution on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. the execution needed improvement. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we're going into spoiler time on mm -hmm. this one. Uh, so, fuck you number one for me uh, was, and I apologize for cursing so much in this one. It's a Star Wars review. This is a family-friendly movie. I should not be cursing that much, but man, I'm frustrated. <laughs> uh, the first one, they kill off Chewie. And he's immediately alive again. Just eat, like, wow, not even going to give us, like, suspense for a second on that one. Not even going to give us suspense for Honestly, a second. Honestly, after, like, um, after the, uh, after the deaths in the previous ones, after, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker d uh, kicks Luke the... Luke, Han, yeah. Han, all of them, I'm like, how many more of the original cast are they going to kill off? Or, like... Have uh, we well, we know that one in this one. <laughs> Uh, let me go, okay, this one was not an F you, but this is one of those ones where I was like, you could have done this so much better, where, uh, yeah, Leia, you know, we know that the actress who played her, Carrie Fisher, she did pass away, and so we don't know exactly what she was going to originally do in this film, but there is a moment where we have her walking off stage, and you could tell all this stuff was added in after she passed away, mm -hmm. in which they said, she knows what she has to do, she has to reach out to her son, and it's going to take everything that she has left, and then you get, like, in the shadows, this person who's clearly not the actress, but is a stand-in. Uh, which, understandable, I mean, that's what you had to do. I get it. And she reached out, and you just hear, in a voice that, again, I don't think this one was the actress's voice. Like, this one sounded... It might have been the actress, but, man, it did not sound uh, like Carrie Fisher to me. Um, but she just goes, Ben. And then you see Ben. Uh, you see um, uh, Kylo Ren up there fighting uh, Ray, and then he has this moment where he hears him and he just goes, oh. And then he gets stabbed, and then Ray heals him back up. And then after that, like, that was it. That was all that really took. And then he has, like, a moment where he, she talks to his dad, which, that was nice. I enjoyed that. I thought that one was actually mm -hmm. pretty good. But I kept looking at the moment where all, where they keep saying, oh, he's going to take everything that she has left. And all you hear is just Ben, and that's it. And he just goes, Mom? And, like, it took everything she had to just, like, say his name out there. Like, no, man, you could have done that so much better. Like, have, like, him hear her voice, and then he, like, pauses, and then all of a sudden, like, he starts fighting in his head, and then he just sees, like, flashbacks of him as a child. Because we know that they can CGI these actors to look younger. I know, but it's like, I kind of felt like because he was middle of the fight, and, like, Ray probably didn't hear Leia, so she just stabbed him when his guard was down. But, what? Well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, he could, you know, with the Force, you could have him, like, experience a lifetime of conversations within a moment there. That's true. Like, 
again, like say you, she's trying to do something with the force there, like reach into his memories, like show him his childhood, like show him like all the positive stuff, like just this remember all the happy times we've yeah, had together. Yeah, have this race like... of, of uh, memories, race of emotions, just flooding back into him. Just something other than, huh? Did somebody say my name? <laughs> like that was, uh, you could have done that so much better. But on paper, it's a good idea. Uh, just like, again, with uh, Ray trying to pull the big ship down, uh, I mentioned she did something that was bigger than anything we've seen her do before. You want to have it be that Ray can pull a ship down, totally fine, but because the audience has not seen her do anything of that magnitude before, you got to present it like she's never done anything of this magnitude before. Instead, it was just pulling it down. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, was, I've, I think of, like, the Mandalorian when uh, Baby Yoda, like, lifted that giant beast in the air. Yeah, and he like, was struggling. Yes, and then when he was done, he passed out. So, yeah. like... Yeah, something like that. Exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, jeez. So that was one of those things that I was like, those are two of those things that I was like, okay, this is good, but it could have been done better. Um, and that leads me into Ben's big, big character turn uh, of Kylo Ren kind of redeeming himself. Yeah. I was like, okay, again, we needed that moment there where he has that turn to be a little bit better. Yeah. But I did actually like that when he goes in there and goes... Uh, to fight, you see him not really being as mysterious and dark as he was. And he's actually kind of like getting his ass kicked. Like he jumps down to the big chain and he just goes, Ugh! Like you can tell he got hurt there. And then when he gets surrounded by all the guys, he just has this moment of, <laughs> I like that because I looked at that and went, That's Han. That's his dad coming out. I kind of like that, but it made me go, I kind of wish that we had gotten some more low modes like that before this when it was Kylo, so that way when it kind of comes out more here, I could have, like, seen it earlier on and gone, oh, it was always there, and now it's here. Instead, it really felt like a totally different character to me. Mm -hmm. um, also, another big F you that I had. Uh, at the end of this, when Kylo, sorry, I should say Ben at this point, when Ben heals up Ray, which was good, Ray used the force to heal him, and then Kylo used the force back to heal her, and then he dies because of that. Like, I like that. I like that, you know, she gave him some of her life energy, so he gave it back there to save her at the end. I like all that. But then they kiss. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I'm not a Raylo shipper whatever or, like, whatever that name no, is. No, you didn't, you didn't put in the time on that one, man. <laughs> I don't care, uh, which again, I do point out there were problems in Last Jedi. The whole shirtless Kylo Ren exchange, like, <laughs> the, I don't even, I don't even really like you like that, Kylo, like, the, <laughs> that was a problem. And then in this one, like, they just kiss, like, I thought they were gonna hug, I was like, sweet, that would be a sweet moment between the two of them. They kiss instead, I just went, boo. Well, he's dead now, so you don't have to worry about them kissing anymore. I'm okay, yeah. <laughs> He's at least dead, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I had a I had a big problem with the fact that like they kissed at the end and went, there's uh, I do I do not buy for one second that there is unspoken sexual tension between these two men. They actually love each other in that way. No, she should have just hugged the guy because, oh yes, you're back. You're back on the good side. We were able to reach out and connect with you and we got you back. Yes, okay, good. The kiss really just, mm, I ain't about that. Yeah. I, no. Uh, um, how did you feel about the uh, spy being revealed? <laughs> it was another one of those things that I was just kind of like, okay, what are you going to do with this? And then it's like immediately resolved right mm -hmm. afterwards. Like, all right, so not a lot. Uh... I was okay with it being Hux. Uh, I think that's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although uh, all the Hux Kylo shippers are probably heartbroken now. <laughs> you have to stop bringing up shippers in this. Uh, but I, I was okay with it because of his reasoning. Like I thought at first they were gonna say I was actually a good guy all along, and went, "No, you weren't." But no, his reasoning was, "No, I actually want to be the one in charge, and I have to get Kylo in trouble to make that happen." Like, oh, okay, I can. He's a weasel. I can buy that. <laughs> Yeah, that works for me. Cool. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of other things in here that I had uh, big problems with. Uh, oh, yeah, Jesus. Uh, they go down, they meet uh, Poe's past characters, the lady in the mask, that uh, character in there. 
Uh, which, again, this is something that Star Wars does. They introduce characters and you go, oh, these are characters that you're going to find out more about in their own side stories. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, fine. It's not nearly as bad as in Last Jedi when all of a sudden, oh, you need a thief? Guess what? You happen to be thrown into a cell with this random stranger who happens to be the best thief in the galaxy. I'm going to help you because I got my own side story going on over here, kids. It's not nearly as bad as that. This one is acceptable. They introduce a character. Okay, you're interesting. You got some involvement in the past. Cool. I'm all right with that. And they do it. They do introduce this idea that Poe knows people on this planet. But then they blow up the entire planet. Mm-hmm. I went, oh, we're not going to see them anymore. Oops. Then in the end, when everybody comes back, she's there. And, like, the little mechanic guy just pops up like, I'm here too. Everyone you know from that plant was okay. Yes. How? We all evacuated just in time. What? Oh, uh, yeah, that frustrated me to no end. <laughs> yeah, that one felt that felt like a worse cop out than Chewie. Because at least with Chewie, I looked at that and went, you did not just kill Chewie. Which, by the way, the explanation for how Chewie was alive, I guess he must have been on another transport ship. There was no other transport ship. <laughs> You all saw the one transport ship arrive and fly off. Oh, but there was another one off screen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Once yeah, again, not was very a, good editing. That was, no, that was lazy writing. <laughs> that was some lazy ass writing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now, one thing I want, that was disappointing is like when uh, Ray looks off into the distance and you see the ghost of Han Solo and like, or is it Luke or like? It was Le it was uh, Luke and Leia. Luke, Luke and Leia. Okay, yes, yes, the Skywalkers. Yes, yes, and I didn't see um I didn't see Ben with them and I was disappointed. Oh, he's in uh, he's in Jedi Hell. <laughs> He didn't redeem himself enough there. At the no, end. no. He goes to the bad place where all the Sith people are. <laughs> See, he didn't get enough good person points. <laughs> He's in limbo with Han Solo because Han shot Honestly, first. That's, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you want to have the two of them just be on a fishing trip in limbo forever? I'm cool with that. They deserve some father-son body time there. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh... But speaking of seeing like the ghost there at the end, this is something that I actually think was like was a lot of the fan servers in here I had problems with because I was like, man, it's just lazy. Like you want to do fan servers, I'm totally cool with it, but man, I just felt like it really was lazy and peach like the taste of my breath apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, like for example, Chewy getting a medal at the end, that was another like, oh go fuck yourself movie. <laughs> Like, this one, you just stop to turn to the audience and go, we all know this is a question you had in the message boards, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we all know this is a thing that you guys were I kind of just... laughed because of how silly it was. It was so goddamn silly! <laughs> Peach. Peach, 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 you're being silly. You're being too silly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was so ridiculous how that was introduced. Which, by the way, also, not to get, like, too nerdy on you guys, but there was a Chewbacca comic, which is part of the Marvel comics, which means that it is canon where they do explain why he didn't get a medal. That he actually did get a medal and he just doesn't like medals. Like he handed it off to this kid and went, oh, you, you don't want this? And he goes, oh, so you're just not into medals. And it's like, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Well, like, he doesn't really have anything to pin the medal on to. So. Also, it's like, Chewie's a warrior. So it's yeah. like, yeah, he does, he's not into that. So this one, it was like, man, there's even like an in-universe reason why he didn't get a medal. <laughs> And you were still just like, no, for the fans, all the fans, be happy about this thing now. Uh, but the one bit of uh, fan service at the end that I actually did really enjoy was um, uh, at the end when, uh, uh, not Darth Maul, uh, Palpatine is like, I am all the Sith. Which I like the imagery of where that fight is taking place. That there's just this big ass arena full of just the Sith. Mm -hmm. And I dug that. I thought that that actually was a really good visual. There are some good visuals. There are yes. some good shots in here. That is one of the reasons why I didn't dislike this thing more. Uh, but I like that in there. I do kind of wish that when Palpatine was destroyed, you just saw like all... You didn't see the Sith being blown away. You just saw like all the cloaks fall to the ground. Like there was nobody in there to begin with. There was mm -hmm. just like Sith ghosts the entire time. Um, but I do like that uh, Rey's got all the Jedi in her. Uh, which, by the way, another thing that I like, I like that they give a little bit more backstory to Leia and that she actually did train to be a Jedi and she did get her own lightsaber, but she stopped doing it because she, with the Force, was able to see, oh, my son's going to die if I continue down this route. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that. I did actually like that. That was another thing that I didn't enjoy, but that's super spoilery, so I can't really talk about that in the regular part. Uh, but I did really enjoy 
when she hears the voice of all the previous mm -hmm. uh, Jedi. Jedi. And yeah, when it came up in the credits, I went, all right, how many people they get? They got everybody on this. They got Hayden Christensen to come back. They got uh, uh, Ewan McGregor to come back. They got Samuel Jackson. That was the one that I was listening for because a lot of these guys, I can't pick out their specific voices, but we all know Samuel Jackson's voice. So when I heard that one, I went, oh, they probably got everybody. And there were a lot in there that I didn't recognize. So I'm wondering like how obscure they get with some of these characters. Uh, but yeah, uh, I really did enjoy that bit of fan service in there. Um, so yeah, uh, any other big problems I had with this one? We already talked about how Rose Tigo just got thrown completely under the bus. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, 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 shut off to the side. Like, she'll be here just enough. Yeah. She'll be here just enough that we can say that we kept her around. But, oh, you fucking cowards. You fucking cowards. That's all I have to say to you guys on that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, f Anything else that really kind of bummed me out on this one? Because uh, I know I had multiple other problems. Like, again, how just some things are introduced in here? Uh, Ray using the Force to heal people. Again, I'm not going to say, oh, the Force can't do that. But it's something that we haven't really seen in the movies before. And we haven't seen Ray do it before. I would have dug it if, uh, like, when she first did that, she went, hold on, this is something that I read about in some old scrolls. This is something I've been experimenting with. You know, something to kind of, like, just not go, like, she can just do this now. Like, literally, like, just a little line can make those things a little bit easier to get across. Uh, but this movie is missing a lot of little lines like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I remember the other one that was just a big, like, you got to be kidding me. When they find this random ship... And in the random ship, they find a droid. BB-8 activates the little droid. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, has the greatest name of any droid. Dio. <laughs> oh, the JoJo fans are going to get a lot out of that one. Uh, but yes, the don't hug me, I'm scared robot. Uh, <laughs> he, he... At the end of this thing, they have to find a way to get to where Rey is... And then it turns out, oh, this droid was on the ship that came to grab Rey when she was a baby and take her back to Palpatine so it knows the way. What? What? Uh, yeah. Which, I mean, that's not the entire reason they were able to find her because Rey was also plying out a course for them to find her, which I like that. That to me was Ray going, okay, I'm reaching out to my friends now. I'm not going to try and go off and do oh my, my own gosh, thing. Oh my gosh, Peach. Easy does it. Yeah, Peach. You want to get up there and get those kisses. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I did enjoy that they were able to find her because Ray was playing out that course, but they easy, also... Easy. Yeah. They were also able to find her because Dio was the one that was supposed to deliver Ray in the first place, <laughs> which that was mad. I <laughs> I talk about how this film has got a couple Deus Ex Machinas in here. More like Dio Ex Machinas. Dio Ex Machinas. <laughs> yeah, that one was a Dio Ex Machina if I ever saw one. Uh, yeah, man, I think that this script is just kind of lazy. I think it's lazy. I think it's sloppy. Uh, I think that the editing is really bad in this film. Pacing's pretty darn bad. There's Again, there's some good ideas in here, but I think they took a lot of the ideas from the previous film and just completely chucked them away. And man, the previous film, despite the fact that I think that some of the story elements were not done all that well, I think that some of the ideas that they raised in there were really interesting. I was like, okay, what are we gonna do with this? Nothing at all. And really, it upsets me a lot. And also, let's just talk about the fact that uh, in the previous film, Ray's whole, oh, my parents were nobody. I know a lot of you were like, oh, we want them to be somebody. You don't understand the importance of Ray's parents being nobody. Because the entire point of Star Wars is that, oh, you can be a Jedi. Yes. You can be a Jedi. You can all be Jedi's. You can all be part of the Resistance. You can all fight for good. That's kind of the message of the original Star Wars. And that's one of the reasons why people hate the midichlorians. People hate the midichlorians <laughs> because they... No, I'm not keen on this. I, reason, I totally understand. One of the reasons people hate the midichlorians is because it's, it came in here and instead of going, oh, you could be a Jedi if you really wanted to, if you trained for it and you worked hard for it. No, you can't. You got to be born with that shit, kid. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Ain't ever going to happen to you. Uh, better learn to become a smuggler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, never going to happen, kid. You don't have the special space germs in your DNA. <laughs> but when Ray goes, my parents are nobody, that's kind of enforcing that idea again of that anybody like yes a jedi could come from anywhere and that's an important message no it can't your grandpappy's gotta be palpatine oh my which i that is such a cheap ass loophole that they came into yes 
your parents were nobody. But your grandfather was someone- Fuck off! Uh, yeah. I really- I'm sorry for all the cursing I did in this one, by the way. Uh, anything else you want to add to the spoiler talk? Um, there were Ewoks. They were, yes. <laughs> that was one of the things that we had to cut out. She, wa she really wanted to bring up that there were Ewoks in this one. <laughs> was that really We're worth cutting out, though? You know someone was gonna be mad about that shit. <laughs> Because they do appear at the end as a and starring the Ewoks. Dee 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 dee. Uh, uh, yub nub. Uh, which I love that the Ewoks are watching one of the big Star Destroyers go down. Which, again, another thing that I just had to roll my eyes at is that, oh my goodness, every single one of these ships has the power of a Death Star. Oh my god, you had to give us, like, it's not another Death Star. But it's an entire fleet of things with the power of Death Stars, and they all have that one place you gotta shoot to take them. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up with this! Oh my they're god! They're not Death Stars. They're mini Death Stars. <laughs> they're, they're the compact, more efficient version of Death Stars. <laughs> Shut up with that! Uh, yeah, I hated that. I really did. But it did make me laugh when you saw that ship going down, and then the uh, the Ewok celebrating, and I was just like. Please tell me the Ewoks took this one down with just like a really big catapult and a rock. Because <laughs> again, like people keep talking about how like even the first trilogy is, forget the prequels, but people talk about how the first trilogy is flawless. It's like, no it ain't. The Empire was brought down by teddy bears that got introduced in the last film. <laughs> That's not, no, that original trilogy has problems to it, man. They all have problems to it. And this one is probably the most problematic of this entire franchise, so yeah, uh... I just, there's things in here that I can't get over with, man. I really did have problems with it. Um, yeah, that is it. That is our review of, I keep wanting to say Force Awakens, uh, <laughs> Rise of the Skywalker. Um, All right. So, so, goodbye and happy life day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Uncut Gems. And we may be back on Sunday with cats. Maybe. But if we're not on Sunday, it's because I really want to save it for the Gauntlet of Garbage, <laughs> which is the series of reviews that we do in January, where we come in here and we just review the worst films of last year, which, by the way, we're not total, you know, assholes here. We also do the quest for the best, where we review the best films of last year. But I know people don't really look forward to that. People like the Gauntlet of Garbage, so. They like to see us suffer. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of want to save cats for that. I mean, it's only a week away until we begin that, so. <laughs> Might as well wait for that, so. And we're not back with cats on Sunday. Look forward to that next year. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye.